Coming up on NBA Now by Chat Sports, I'm your host, Chase Senior. Appreciate all of you for rocking and rolling with us on the program today. Going to take a look at the top 30 2023 NBA free agents. This list is as deep as it's ever been with star power, elite players, and legitimate key ingredients for a championship contender. Interesting NBA free agency rumors hovering right now around LeBron James, which players could get rookie max contract extensions, might only be two, and LaMelo Bull and Anthony. Anthony Edwards will touch on that, but first, do you love chat sports? If you do and you're a loyal subscriber, I want you to type real one because all of you who watch our content, take it in. Subscribe to the channel and your daily viewers of us, we just want to show you some love. First though, NBA Now, sponsored by Mint Mobile. They're changing the cell phone game with plans starting as low as $15 per month. You don't have to change your cell phone number, which is really important for a lot of us because we don't want to lose our contacts. You don't have to get a new physical phone with their digital eSIM cards to get signed up. You don't have to go to a physical store. Mint Mobile will send it to you. And it's a seamless process. Mintmobile.com slash chat sports. Start saving money today. So we're going to look ahead on today's show. This 2023 free agency class is one of the best, if not the best, free agency classes that we've really ever seen. And of course, this does depend on a couple of stipulations. Player options, restricted free agents, as well as looming contract extensions that could happen in the lead up to 2023 NBA free agency. So when we break down this list, just remember those talking points. Now, as far as these 30 top NBA free agents go, I've broken them down in a couple of different categories. We first take a look at the elite tier. It's truly elite. LeBron James, if he doesn't sign that max contract extension, he could become a free agent in 2023. Kyrie Irving opted into that player option, so only has one year remaining on that deal with the Brooklyn Nets. Draymond Green has a player option. So too does James Harden, Chris Middleton, and Fred Van Vliet. And Andrew Wiggins coming off a marvelous NBA Finals appearance from another team outside of the Golden State Warriors. They could try to pry him away with a deal checking in at about $200 million. So that right there is the elite tier. How about the starter tier? DeAndre Hunter, restricted free agent. Vooch with the Chicago Bulls, still a really good big, but is a little bit of a defensive liability. And last year in Chi-Town, a little bit underwhelming. Christian Wood was traded to the Dallas Mavericks. If it doesn't work out, he could become a free agent to hit the open market. Miles Turner has been one of the best shot blockers in the NBA for a long time. There will be teams vying for his services as a big who has value in today's NBA because he can also stroke the three ball. And then Tyler Hero, a restricted free agent. As for the quality starter tiers, this is when we go deeper into this list. D'Angelo Russell, to me, he's like James Harden light. Pretty good in moments, not nearly consistent enough, and sometimes very maddening. R.J. Barrett is a blossoming superstar who has elite defensive ability and has gotten progressively better in each of his first couple of years since coming out of Duke as a first-round pick for New York. Jeremy Grant, good two-way player. Now with the Portland Trailblazers, I think he's a really good addition aside from Damian Lillard because he gives that team what it was lacking, very good defense. Harrison Barnes. 3 and D player who can do even more and put the ball on the floor. Boyan Bogdanovich, about a 40% three-point guy. Kyle Kuzma redeemed himself last year with the Washington Wizards. Kristaps Porzingis, yeah, he continues to get hurt, but with the Wizards, I thought he actually played pretty good basketball. And Jordan Poole, he could get $100 million, maybe even more as a restricted free agent. From quality starters to the key ingredient pieces. These are guys who can really factor into being really good pieces on a playoff level team that can make a deep run in the postseason. Bogdan Bogdanovich. I love the lack of fear that he has. The guy is just fearless, playing in big games internationally and at the NBA level, never scared to rise up. Al Horford. He came out of nowhere last year in the playoffs with the Boston Celtics and was integral for the Celtics' success and still has some really good years in him. Seth Curry, 
His value could continue to rise because over the last couple of years, he's been one of the best, most consistent, and relied upon three-point shooters in the NBA. P.J. Washington, restricted free agent. Karis LeVert, really a one-way player offensively. Kevin Porter Jr., restricted free agent. A lot of ability, but a little bit of a mental head case at times. And then Reggie Jackson, Russell Westbrook, Stephen Adams, Dylan Brooks, also on that list of key ingredient pieces. So too is Brandon Clark, Brooke Lopez, Matisse Thibel in three years has made two all-NBA defensive teams. Jay Crowder, a little bit older, but can knock down some threes, is a dog, gives you toughness and really good defense. Cam Johnson, I think he's underrated, really good young player. Josh Hart, the prototypical 3 and D guy nowadays. Nasir Little, restricted free agent. Jacob Pirtle, Gary Trent Jr., Will Barton, rounding out our list of the top 30 2023 NBA free agents. I said it a little bit earlier. This free agency class, it is deep, it has star power and a bevy of really, really quality players. Among that group, who do you think is the best free agent? Give me a name right now in the comment section and join the conversation. On the other end, free agency rumors pertaining to some of the big names on that list. First, though, today's show sponsored by Mint Mobile, changing the cell phone game and really flipping it on its head. In this period of inflation, a lot of people are trying to save money. Mint Mobile allows you to do that. And if you go to mintmobile.com slash chat sports, you'll see what I'm talking about. Unlimited premium wireless plans starting as low as $15 per month. That's not a misprint. I did not misspeak. $15 per month. Even your parents might start asking you to stop calling so much because you get unlimited talk and text. And oh yeah, by the way, on America's largest 5G network. It's a cell phone company owned by the famous actor Ryan Reynolds. Start saving money today on your monthly budget by heading to mintmobile.com slash chat sports. Now among those top 30 free agents, there is one headliner. That is LeBron James. Yes, he is set to be 38 years old in December, but last year he averaged nearly 30 points per game. He put his fingerprints on the game in a variety of ways, and he is still playing at an elite level. Last couple of years, injuries have started to creep up, but we know that LeBron James spends millions of dollars per year on his body, and he's going to do whatever he can do to stay on the floor consistently because he cares about his legacy, and his longevity is a big part of of why he's one of the best NBA players of all time. Think about this. LeBron James entered the league in 2003 at 38 years old, still a top five player in this game. That's credit to him getting in the lag and keeping that body healthy. As for what's next for him, LeBron James eligible to sign a two-year, $97 million max extension with the Los Angeles Lakers. The two-year term is the max allowed under the CBA because he's a little bit older. If agreed to, LeBron James would bump up his career earnings to more than a half billion dollars at 532 mil. That would be the highest ever for any NBA player. As for a team to keep an eye on, a team who LeBron James knows very well, it's the hometown squad. The squad who we brought an NBA championship back to a couple of years ago, it's the Cleveland Cavaliers. That's coming from Bobby Marks of ESPN. Until a LeBron James extension is signed in Los Angeles. The Cleveland Cavaliers should be a team to keep an eye on next offseason. Cleveland doubled its win total from two years ago to this past year, 22-42, to 42, and was one of the highest success stories last year despite losing in the play-in tournament. But if you remember before that, before they suffered injuries, they were even higher in the Eastern Conference standings. The Cavs have a strong nucleus consisting of first-time All-Star Darius Garland, the emerging Evan Mobley, the breakout player from last year and Jarrett Allen, and could have more than $30 million in cap space in 2023 with Kevin Love coming off the books. Would James return for a third tenure in Cleveland if he views the Lakers roster as not championship worthy? Bobby Mark said, keep an eye on it. Now, LeBron James is smart. He might have business ties in Hollywood. He might be locked in with a couple of production companies and productions in general. And of course, he has his own production company. But he knows what's at stake with his legacy. He has four championships right now. He's trying to chase Michael Jordan's six championships. He also knows that Steph Curry just won his fourth. Now they're tied. And they're battling it and duking it out as to who is going to be the best player of this generation. So LeBron, he knows about this. This is something that he's thinking about. And if he thinks that the Lakers are not well-equipped or well-positioned to compete for championships in the future, he could look to go to the Cleveland Cavaliers. He could be the headliner to get an expansion team kick-started in Las Vegas or maybe even Seattle. All of those things 
things that we have to certainly consider moving forward with LeBron James. Now, where do you think he is among all of the best players of all time? Fill in the blank for me. This is the classic debate. He is a top blank player of all time. You let me know and let your voices be heard in the comment section. Lastly on the show, rookie max contract extensions. The 2020 draft class eligible now for these max deals. Here's the thing. I don't think there's going to be a lot of movement on this front like there was this past offseason, led by Darius Garland and John Morant. The 2020 draft class could feature the fewest rookie max extensions in league history with only two. Yes, that's correct. Dose. Who are they? LaMelo Ball, Anthony Edwards. Two emerging studs in this league. And you take a look at what they did this past year. Really, really good. LaMelo Ball, point guard. Anthony Edwards, the uber-talented and uber-athletic wing. Different players, both with extraordinarily high value. LaMelo, 20 points per game last year. Much better rebounder and dish man with a little shy of seven rebounds per night. Seven and a half assists. Shooting percentages, 43% from the field. And how about this for LaMelo Ball? Almost 39% from downtown. More volume there for Anthony Edwards, who, again, has much more defensive potential, I think, as compared to LaMelo. More of that scoring wing, not the primary ball handler. That's why the rebounding numbers down, assist numbers down. But Anthony Edwards is a player who I think you can win a championship with as a bona fide number one. I'm not sure the same can be said for LaMelo Ball, but either way, in line for paydays. As for players who are Supermax eligible, that includes Jason Tatum, Pascal Siakam, and Fred Van Vliet. For Van Vliet, and I believe Pascal Siakam, if they're named to an all-NBA team, that changes how much they're eligible to get paid. But either way, Supermax eligible guys, Jason Tatum, Pascal Siakam, and Fred Van Vliet. If you had to pick a young buck between two of those two Max eligible players in LaMelo and the Ant-Man, Anthony Edwards, who would you pick to sign and build your franchise around? Give me an L for LaMelo or an A for the Ant-Man.